okay, I started with a rough storyboard. I did an animatic test of the rough storyboard. I worked a lot between my assets folder and lots and lots of layers and folders and organization to get to my stage frames. And I outputted it as a GIF, save that to the desktop so that I can add it in to Canvas. So this is the five, the three things required for this assignment to meet the requirements is a rough storyboard, a GIF animation, a final GIF animation. I'm going to upload it just like I would any still image. Submit it. And then I want to shrink it down a little bit because eight by eight inches at 150 is basically, basically 20 by 20 inches at 72 dots per inch or uh, pixels per inch, which is a standard screen resolution. So you're going to want to shrink it down a little bit. So I've got that. Next is the third requirement, which is a refined storyboard. The refined storyboard uses your animation and takes film stills from it and plays it out like a comic book. So now that I have my finest, finished animation, I can put the, the, the refined storyboard together. And I do that here. So the first thing I did, I'm going to repeat my last steps in the end of the last video. I put guides around my image. I outputted my frames into layers and I deleted all of the old layers from it. So just to remind you of all of that, you can see it in my history back when I flattened my frames into layers. So I'm going to redo all of that just so you can see it. So I'm going to have the timeline open. This was my finished animation. When I played it through, everything was how I wanted. I outputted it as a GIF. I saved the GIF. The GIF is here. So now I am ready to make my refined storyboard. So step one is to crop your image. So using the crop tool, crop it to your guides and hit return to make sure there's no extraneous pixels hanging out on the sides. We want this to be a clean deck of cards, right? Once you've done that, go to image size and just confirm that it is eight by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. Just in case it got tweaked or changed a little bit, you want it to be a perfect square, you want it to be eight by eight inches, and you want it to be 150 pixels per inch. Okay, we had already saved it when we outputted our GIF. We'd saved our stage file. So at this point, it's a good idea to save it as your refined storyboard. So this will be a new PSD file because this is not about animating. This is about laying out your nine best frames. So I changed the name. It's hung up on the strangest things. I'm just not nice enough to my computer. But we're going to change the name from animation stage to refine storyboard. Because we don't want to accidentally overwrite our stage file. And now that I'm working on the refine storyboard, I'm going to close my assets. Save some memory. I know it's 8 by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. I've already outputted these 
the frames in the timeline into the layers. I'll show you that again. You can say flatten frames into layers and it will bring them in and it will name them not layer, but frame. Then you delete all of the others just to keep it really clean. So your frames are your layers and vice versa if they weren't already. Then I select all of my timeline frames and I drag them to the trash in the timeline tool. And then I close the timeline tool because I don't need it anymore. Now I have a clean stack of cards, right? I know the first card is going to be this one. It's frame one. So I need a table to deal them onto. So I go to image canvas size and I grow from around the eight by eight inches. I grow it into 30 by 40 inches. This is just increasing the pixel space around my frame. I'm going to hit command zero just to fit it on the screen. You can see my guides are there. This isn't required, but it can help. I'm going to create a new blank layer, drag it behind frame one, and then fill that with white. Sometimes I do it with gray, I'm going to do it with white because we actually might print these and you don't want to print flat color. And when you have white in your file, it just means the paper will remain. So now I have guides perfectly centering my, um, my deck of cards here. Now, how do you do layout in Photoshop? Well, you use your guides, but you also use the grids that are built into Photoshop. So if I go up to view and I go to show, I can say show grid, check next to grid. And if you use the sizes that I recommend, you'll see that you have boxes around your image perfectly lined up. Each of these boxes indicates an inch. We want to go one full inch away from our image on all sides. So I'm going to bring down new guides using the move tool onto the ruler. I'll shrink it so you can see. They're going to stick to the grid and I'm going to go one inch on each side out. This is the gutter of our storyboard. So then if I turn off the grid, by going to show and turn off grid, you can also toggle it on and off with command apostrophe. You'll see now I have an organized spacing, a place to put each of my cards. I know frame one goes here and it will stick to the guides. What's my next frame going to be? I can look at my storyboard and kind of decide, right? My rough storyboard sketch. So maybe my next frame will be frame number five. So I'm trying to tell the story using my finished animation frames within a sequence of nine. Then what's my next frame going to be? Not that one, not that one. Is that where the crack starts? It is, so I think it's going to be this one. So you can see that the colors start to change and the creature starts to move. Then the crack develops. I think I want this one. That's more dramatic. So I move that into place. Then my center frame, where I'm going to have it open up a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll use that one. That I don't need to move. It's already in the center. This is where it gets a little bit complicated because I have a center frame now. I'm going to mark that with a color so I remember what the center frame is. And then I'm going to turn it off so I can see all the the other frames, right? Every other frame, or I can leave it on, but just remember that it's there because every card is in the center. So now I'm going to deal from the top of the deck and see what's next. It just starts to open up a little bit. So I like that one. 
I'm trying to tell the story. Beginning, middle, end. Then the creature explodes out. The new one emerges. Do I like that one or do I like this one? I think I like the more explosive one. Well, hmm. let's go with this one. And then lastly, I don't want to end my storyboard with the same frame that I began with, even though that's how my animation ends, because that, that doesn't help the storytelling. I just have to pick a final frame. I think this one works. So you pick the nine that best tell your story. Now we save this as our refined storyboard but it's a PSD file. In order to save it and put it up to, to Canvas, it makes sense to crop it down. And instead of cropping using our crop tool, we can go to Canvas size and we can crop the same way that we grew the image and make sure it's exactly centered. So the width I'm gonna keep at 30, but now the height I'm also gonna put at 30. And it's gonna warn me that it's gonna clip some of the image, but that's the whole point. And so now I have a nice square composition. And then if there's anything, well, it's a PSD that I don't like, like I don't like that little blip there. It looks great in the animation, but there it distracts me. So I'm thinking maybe my middle frame needs to change. Oh wait, my middle frame is wrong there anyway. So that shouldn't be showing. There we go. Yes, yeah, so that's much better. So save it. And now we can save it as a JPEG. So save as a copy or save a copy. So have to wait till the PSD is done saving. And that JPEG is gonna be the refined storyboard you put up to Canvas. And that would be what we print. So when you go to save a copy, you have to change the format from PSD to JPEG. So from Photoshop to JPEG, and hit save. Students sometimes ask about JPEG 2000. JPEG 2000s have a variable resolution option for printing, but it's not something we need to worry about, so let's just use old fashioned JPEGs because JPEG 2000s just take up more memory. All right, and then if you wanna turn your guides off, you can just hit Command semicolon, and you'll see what your, your JPEG image will look like. And then you take that JPEG image, you find it, there it is. I mark my online file formats with orange and my working file formats, my PSDs with green. So GIF, Animations are an online format. JPEGs are an online format. And the three things you need to upload to Canvas are your storyboard sketch, your final GIF animation, and your refined storyboard, because that is what you would use for a print portfolio to show your animation skills, to show your storytelling. Okay, when we present these, which we'll probably do at the beginning of next class, because there's other things I want to introduce today that are important. But when we present these, it gives you a little bit longer to work on your animation. What I will want is for you to decide whether you think your transformation is better shown in your animation or in your refined storyboard, because it really depends on the kind of content that you're showcasing. So for me, is the story better shown in the animation or in the refined storyboard? 
it honestly might be better shown 